Good morning, guys. So we've checked in here to Martha Creek Provincial Park near Revelstoke, British Columbia, and it's actually our last stop on our Rocky Mountain loop tour thing that we've been doing. If you've missed those videos, you can go back a bit, but we've gone to Mount Robson and then Jasper National Park. We've taken the Icefield Highway down to Banff and then stayed in Banff for a while, and now we're here at Martha Creek. We were lucky enough too to book this site and it's one of our favorite sites here. This is site 47 and man, look at those views. We've got like a cliff overlooking the lake here and I'm pretty sure this is one of the only sites here that have a fence overlooking the lake and the view and the mountains and seriously, we lucked out hardcore on this one. But today I've decided to share with you three quick and easy meals that you can make in your RV or even camping in a tent. They're nice and easy and like one pot meals, so less dishes and super quick to make as well. For brunch this morning, I'll be making um, a shishushka, which is like a tomato sauce egg dish, quite delicious. And then for dinner, we're gonna be having a curry pumpkin soup, one of my favorite soups ever. If you've never had pumpkin soup, you've gotta try this one out. And then I'll also be preparing tomorrow's breakfast as well. It's checkout day tomorrow, so we need a quick and easy breakfast on the go. So I'll be prepping that tonight and having it in the fridge for us. So first meal today is gonna be brunch actually. We kind of missed out on like breakfast, so this will be our breakfast and lunch. But we're gonna make some shashushka. So we've made this quite a few times on our vlogs before, if you'll remember, but it's one of our favorites because it's so tasty. It's, well, we make it pretty spicy and we like spicy food, but you can also make this non-spicy. And it's also really quick and easy to make, which makes it really good for camping because you can just kind of like throw all the other ingredients together in the pan here and it kind of does itself. So let's get started, we're gonna add some oil to this hot pan here and then we're gonna add our diced onions. So this is half an onion here and I forgot something to stir with so be right back. Alright and these onions are just gonna cook until they're like softened and like semi-translucent. So I'm cooking on our little butane stove top out here. It's a Coleman, I don't know, butane outdoor thing. <laughs> it was pretty inexpensive. I think it was like maybe $30 or something. And it's really convenient because it's really small. Like some of them you'll have like two different burners, but we just have the single one. So it packs up really small and it even comes with like a carrying case and everything. And it's really easy to just kind of throw in our hatch when we're done with it and kind of forget about it. But it's pretty cool that all it takes is these little butane containers and they get hooked in right in here. So, I don't know, there it is, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it makes cooking outside really, really easy and this would be perfect if you're tenting or RVing. If you are interested in this kind of thing, we do have our Amazon link down below and you can click and find it there. Okay, so the onions are almost looking done here. Now I'm gonna add some of this minced up garlic. You don't, you don't wanna be adding this too soon um, with the onions just because it is like minced up. So if you add it too soon, it'll burn and have that burnt garlic taste. So I'm just gonna add some, no, no. <laughs> I forgot a spoon. So now we have lots of garlic in there. And then we're just gonna saute this until you can just smell the garlic because then you know all the oils are releasing and it's not gonna burn. Additional commentary provided by our little sweet baby Chloe here. So yeah, like 30 seconds later, garlic is smelling good. So we're gonna add this big can. It's 28 ounces of diced tomatoes. I prefer using diced over like um, whole or stewed or anything because you do want these to cook pretty well. Um, if you don't cook them long enough, you'll kind of have that like raw tomato taste and kind of, I don't know what the right word is, but raw tomato taste. <laughs> Acidic, that's the word I'm looking for. And you don't want that. So it's nice having them chopped into smaller pieces already and then you don't have to 
work too much at cooking them. So I'm just turning the heat up to high here and I'm gonna get these tomatoes to a boil. So just while these are getting to a boil, I just wanted to mention this is a really cool dish because you can make it exactly how you want to make it. We always just use whatever we have in the pantry or in the fridge and what needs to get used up. Like before we've included some diced up carrots in here or chickpeas or spinach. Um, really any vegetable would go great in here I'm sure. And then you can also go crazy with what you want to serve it with. We're going to have some toast today since it's kind of like our breakfast brunch. But if you were serving this for dinner, which a lot of people do, you can serve it with rice. You can top it with cheese like we're gonna do. I love topping it with feta cheese, but we don't have any right now. You can really get creative with what you add to this dish because really all it is is cooked tomatoes. You can even change up the spices if you don't want it to be spicy. Like I said, you don't have to include any spice or if you want it to be extra spicy, you can add some extra. You could add even some crazy flavors like curry powder and make this like a totally different dish. But yeah, this is just kind of like the basic version and feel free to add anything that you'd like. Now that the tomatoes are starting to boil here, we're gonna add our spices. So like I said, we're gonna make it spicy. I'm gonna get some cayenne powder and add some of that. We normally use, um, what are they called? Red chili flakes. <laughs> um, to make this spicy, we'll add quite a bit, but again, we just don't have it and we have cayenne powder, so we're using that. I'm gonna add some paprika because I love paprika. And then of course some salt and pepper. Okay, we're gonna mix that all together. And then we're gonna reduce the heat down to just the simmer. And we're gonna leave this to simmer for a while and just taste it every once in a while to see when our tomatoes are less acidic and yummy tasting. Tomatoes are tasting delicious. And you also notice that the liquid that was in here is reduced as well. So if you kind of just like make a swipe on the pan, all of the tomatoes don't fall in on themselves right away. It kind of leaves a gap there. So that's exactly what we're looking for because we're gonna start adding some eggs. So what I'm gonna do is just make a little kind of hole. Grab an egg and put it right in that hole. And I'm gonna do this four times. Two eggs for each of us. And as the pan gets fuller, it gets more and more difficult to hold a little divot there, but. All right, then we're just gonna season the eggs quickly with some salt and pepper. And we're gonna turn this back up a little bit so it starts to just barely simmer again. This is the point where if you had a lid for your frying pan, you put that on, but we don't. So we're just gonna use this other frying pan and try and save some of that heat in there so that we can cook those eggs. Okay, well, excuse Chloe playing in the background, but our eggs are looking good. So as you can see, all the whites are cooked and they're still runny, which is what you're really looking for. What I'm gonna do is just top these quickly with some grated cheese. We're using Monterey Jack just because it's what we have. But again, this is totally optional. And now we're gonna switch in for this pan to make our toast. So we don't even own a toaster in our RV just because what's the point in plugging it in we find when we can just use this pan to make our toast here. I really love this pan and uh, Luke hates it <laughs> because <laughs> it has these grooves in it. So it's really good for making toast because it kind of like allows airflow and stuff. And it perfectly also fits four pieces of toast, which is really convenient. And this handle folds in, so it's great for storage. This is like my favorite pan ever. If I can find it, again, this will be linked down below with our Amazon link if you'd like to get it as well. Oh, Like that, we got some shishishka. 
We've tried before topping the bread with the shishishka, but it makes it like really soggy, so we like to have it on the side. Kind of like get a bite, put it on the bread, take a bite. It's really, really good. But anyways, we're gonna get eating. Alrighty, so for dinner tonight, I'm gonna be making a curried coconut pumpkin soup. So I've got some butter melted here, and I'm just gonna add, this is the other half of the onion. This one time I like finely, finely diced it because I don't have a blender to blend this soup after, and it's, it's supposed to be like a creamy, smooth soup. So I tried to cut these down as small as possible and I'll be cooking them down as well and hopefully in the end it won't be too chunky of a soup. I want these onions to caramelize so I'll be cooking them low and slow so it'll be like 10 minutes on low heat and they should be good. The onions are getting golden now so I'm gonna add some garlic. Oh man, I really should just bring out a spoon. <laughs> Okay, and I'm also gonna add the curry powder now as well, and then just kind of toast this off again, just so you can smell the garlic. And actually, you won't be able to smell the garlic, it'll all be curry powder. But if you toast your spices beforehand like this, it really just like bring out more flavor. And again, like 30 seconds later, you can really smell those spices starting to activate and get warm. So now is a good time to add our pumpkin puree. Of course, if you're at home or you just feel like it, you could roast your own pumpkins, and I've done that as well, but in the RV, it's obviously a lot easier just to buy the can of pumpkin puree. Just make sure you don't buy the pumpkin pie filling. You want the actual just pure pumpkin. So yeah, that's going in here. And then next, I'm gonna be adding some vegetable broth. And I'll turn the heat up now and get this going towards like a simmer and a boil. Okay, with our soup simmering here, we're going to add the spice. Again, this is optional, but I'm just gonna add some cayenne pepper. And some salt and pepper. And now for our last ingredient, I'm gonna be adding some coconut milk. So this is what is gonna make it creamy, obviously. And that's what's so great about this recipe, there's only eight ingredients. It's a really nice camping meal to have because you don't need to have a lot of ingredients in your fridge. And actually I just realized that nothing even needs to be in the refrigerator except for the butter. And if you didn't want to use butter, you could also use oil, that would work as well. So if you're looking to save room in your small RV fridge, this is also a great one to have in your back pocket. So once that coconut milk is all incorporated, all you have to do is simmer this soup for really as long as you want. I mean, I would go for maybe, I don't know, at least five minutes just to get those flavors all incorporated. And then you're ready to eat. So there you go, curried pumpkin coconut soup. Let's give it a little taste here. It's really hot, but... Mm. It's like a little bit sweet from the pumpkin, and then it's got a little bit of kick from the cayenne, and then that curry powder just adds all the flavor. And the coconut milk, it adds like that almost Thai flavor, like, I don't know, just that coconutty little bit of flavor. And it makes it really creamy, and it's a good alternative to using cream all the time in your soup. So we're gonna chow down on this, and then prepare our breakfast for tomorrow before bed. Okay, and our last meal for the day, like I said before, is actually prepping for tomorrow's breakfast. We're gonna be doing overnight oats. If you thought the other two recipes were easy, this one is even easier, which is crazy. Basically all you do is pour a bunch of ingredients together with some oats and some milk and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. And the oats will absorb all the moisture from the milk and stuff and like soften into a nice consistency, kind of like oatmeal, but cold. So you can really customize this any way that you want. We're gonna be doing like a banana, peanut butter, chocolate chip, chia seed, <laughs> basically a bunch of stuff all in one. But what I'll do first is I'll put half of this banana into this container. And then I'm just gonna mash this up so that 
there's some chunks and then some that's just like mashed up flavor that'll get all throughout the oats. And then I'm just gonna try and use this spoon to cut up some more banana pieces. Right, and then we're gonna add some peanut butter. And then our oats, you wanna make sure that you're using quick oats, not um, like rolled oats or anything else. And then we'll add the milk next. And for some sweetness, we're gonna add maple syrup and also chocolate chips. Luke loves chocolate, so I'm putting this one in for him. <laughs> nice. And then to make it a little healthy, we're gonna add some chia seeds. These also will absorb the milk moisture and fluff up and become nice and chewy. <laughs> you really don't even notice them honestly in here, but they are like a superfood and pretty good for you, so we'll add those as well. Then all you have to do is stir it all up. You wanna make sure you really stir up the peanut butter well, otherwise it'll just be one big clump. So as you can see here, it's a pretty soupy mess and it really doesn't look that good. But when it sits overnight, it turns into this nice silky consistency and really, really tasty. And that's it. And hello from me, everybody. You haven't seen me in this video yet, obviously. I've just been kind of tending to the cameras, helping Alicia film her RV meals slash camping meals for you. Hopefully you found some inspiration in this video here. I mean, everyone loves Alicia's RV cooking as it is, so here's some easy ones to try. But this is going to be the last video kind of concluding our Jasper Banff loop we just did. As you may be aware, we left Banff National Park, had a great time there, and then Revelstoke had this beautiful site we stayed at before. We did stay at this campground, so if you want to see an official tour of all of these beautiful campsites, at least half of the campsites here, it seems like, are all lakefront. People are putting their boats down there and everything, so be sure to check out that video if you want to actually find out what Martha Creek Provincial Park here in Revelstoke has to offer. So yeah, be sure to subscribe if you're new, hit the video like if you enjoyed it, it always shows the support, we love seeing your support from everyone. And otherwise, we'll catch you in the next video, friends. Take care.